one hell of a guy, primetime anchor on the uh, Big Ten Network, and a Phi Beta Kappa. And I can't recall the last time we had a Phi Beta Kappa on this program. We welcome Dave Rebson. We welcome you to the Daily Topic. It's game time, long ball time, as we broadcast from Carmichael's. The place for steaks, 1052 West on Monroe Street. Stop by, enjoy that Chicago cut, or maybe a filet mignon. Before we talk about Big Ten football, okay, the eventuality, it appears to be inevitable. Four 16-team super conferences. Where does that leave Bowling Green, for example? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably where they are right now, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it was interesting that, that it seemed it was headed in that direction. And then the brakes got put on it a little bit this week. So, yeah, I mean, I think the feeling is that ultimately that's where we're going to get, whether it's in five years, 10 years, 15 years, that at some point. But I do think there is this sense of resistance. I, you know, I think the issue when you're running a conference is every time you add a team, they need to bring more to the conference than they're going to take. Right. So at a certain point, does every one of these additions add value? And, you know, I think in the Big Ten, you would certainly make the argument that Penn State added value and that Nebraska added value. Who else would add value? How about, uh, how about Missouri? Uh, you know, I guess the initial thought was no, right? Because they were interested and they're not in. So, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, again, if you're, if you're put up against the wall and you have to make an addition, then maybe you start weighing those. But I mean, I think at least in the Big Ten, the decision has been quality over quantity. It seems like the Pac-12 went in the same direction, right? That they felt like, we like what we have, TV deal's good, do you wanna, you don't wanna water down your product. If uh, Jack Swerber, mm -hmm. the AD at Notre Dame, was sitting with us right now, and he was going to make a decision about remaining independent or joining the ACC, right? what would you tell him to do? What would I tell them to do? I mean, I guess I'd have to know the finances of of where they are, what the ACC deal would mean to them. It seems like Notre Dame is a case unto itself because it, I feel like everyone else looks at this as, okay, what's in our financial best interest? What uh -huh. can we do for the, for the bottom line? But it seems like, and you're around Notre Dame, maybe you know better than I do, it seems like that independence is just so important to them that that is kind of the core of who they are. They are football independent. And that maybe you do that even at the sacrifice, because Indiana makes more money off TV than Notre Dame does. Oh yeah. Purdue makes more money off TV. So you're third in your own state in terms of your TV deal, but it seems that that's not what's, what is motivating them. Dave, the fact is, and you know this, Notre Dame basketball, great program under Mike Bray. Yeah. But it's a tough sell. Well, it's hard because, you know, they have the opposite problem in, with basketball in that they're in a league where the basketball is so overwhelmingly good that I think it's, it's tough. You know, there was a time, I mean, you remember it well, when Notre Dame basketball was a huge deal. You know, I mean, I remember, you remember the, the, the poll they had with the fouls, right, right, sure. the Christmas tree lights? I mean, that was a, playing for Notre Dame, that was a marquee basketball program with Trapuca and Paxson and all those guys. And, and you know David Rivers, and somehow that got lost. You know that that you know whether it was that all of a sudden you had ESPN, you had all these games that were there, and they weren't necessarily a part of that, or you know what it was. I, I don't exactly know, but I, I I think that their uniqueness got lost somewhere. You know I I love Pat Fitzgerald. Yeah, head football coach in Northwestern. Sure, seems to embody everything that we want in a so-called head coach in today's right. social media-driven era. Right. That being said. You heard it here first. Three, four years down the road, Pat's going to wake up and say, you know what? I want the whole enchilada. I can't win a national title in Northwestern. It's just yeah. not feasible. Right. I can be competitive, but I can't win a national title, which tells me that Fitzgerald will want a football fan. He'll want something bigger than the school in Evanston. Well, I mean, I guess only Pat can really answer that question. I mean, from where I sit, and as well as I know Pat, I think he looks at it a couple ways. I think he looks at it that in 1995, without any of the facilities that they have now and that they're about to get as well, you know, I think they're really going to improve what they have, particularly the kind of Sunday through Friday facilities, you know, the everyday operations. Without that, without any kind of history, I mean, the worst history 
ever, right? I mean, certainly the, the 25 previous years were as bad as any program, I and mean, they were just abysmal. I always say they weren't bad, they aspired to be bad. Bad would have been good, right? It would have been a step up. I mean, so I was it was brutal. It was brutal, right? I was on the sidelines yeah. when uh, Muddy Waters and Michigan State beat Northwestern, and Northwestern established a record for consecutive I was losses. in the stands, and yeah, I remember, 28 I remember, in a row. I remember the fans yes. marching down the sidelines, chanting, we're number one. <laughs> and tearing down the goalposts and throwing them in the lake. So when you think about where they were in 95, and Pat will say we were number three in the country, ranked number three in the country without any of the stuff that they have now. I think that he believes in his core that he can get it done. Now, whether or not he's right or not, I believe that that's what Pat Fitzgerald believes. Right now as we speak, is Wisconsin capable of uh, running the table? Yeah, we were just talking about this today in our show meeting. Yeah, I think so. They're really good. I mean, there are some there are some staggering statistics when you look at Wisconsin. I mean, they, you know, this running game is unbelievable. Not only is it powerful, but they've gone 629 carries without fumbling. The last time, not losing a fumble, fumbling. So, I mean, that's the second game of last year it was the last time a Wisconsin running back fumbled the ball. So, I mean, it's just, you know, Russell Wilson, unbelievably efficient at quarterback. So, I mean, I think the combination, they're so hard to defend that even though their defense is, at this point, didn't look great against UNLV, have looked better the last couple of weeks, it's hard to know how good the competition is, but you're constantly, we, we were making the comparison today in our meeting, it's like holding serve in tennis. They're always gonna hold serve on offense. I mean, last year they scored 70 touchdowns, they punted 38 times. And that was last year without a quarterback who's as good as Wilson. I just think it's gonna be hard to keep up with them. Could someone do it? Absolutely. I mean, you look at the talent on the field in, in the SEC, there are gonna be teams that are gonna be able to slow them down. But I think they're really good. I, I think they're capable of running the table in the Big Ten. Absolutely. Now, uh, Mr. Revson, you're uh, under oath. All right. Be honest. Yeah. Back in the 80s, you were a big devotee of Copic on Sports Time Radio. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up listening to you, watching you. You know, you owned this town when I was a kid. I mean, absolutely owned it. But it was neat. It was the whole era of local sports, which on TV, which I think is, is unfortunately dying. But I mean, you know, you looked at with you and Weigel and Johnny Morris. I mean, it was, it was big. You turn, I, I would flip to all of you guys to see, you know, I'd time it. So, you know, what time does Check come on? What time does Johnny come on? When's Weigel on? I mean, that was, because it was all you could get, right? I mean, that's what's so amazing is how it's all expanded now. You've made my decision very easy for me. Yeah. I'm going to fire my agent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, David, I appreciate it. Chad, buddy. thanks a lot for Thank having you me. Thank you for taking time. Yep. Out. Dave Rebson, primary anchor of the Big Ten Network, very simply one of the best in the business. This has been the Daily Topic from uh, Carmichael's, the place for steaks, 1052 West Monroe Street. Do your taste buds a flavor. Stop down at Carmichael's. You'll never go wrong. So long, everybody.